Kicking off the entirety of this over 470 lot sale, we have a really amazing collection of 30 prints by 20 artists. Artists were known as the Provincetown printers, mostly women artists working together in Provincetown uh, around the turn of the century. Blanche Lazelle's Barn in the Dunes. Blanche Lazelle was one of the hold stays of the Provincetown printers. Barn in the Dunes is a great combination of the white lines that uh, formulate the white line woodcuts. It has part kind of Matisse colors and paper cutout vibes. It has bovist elements that feel kind of expressive. Uh, it's one of the highlights of the Provincetown Fairs. James Dean in the 1955 film, Rebel Without a Cause, is incredibly captivating. From his attire to his appearance, he was an icon of that era. Andy Warhol looked for these cultural icons to create his 1985 series ads. James Dean is featured in this unique screen print, one of 30 trial proofs, and it's a beautiful impression. Barbara Kruger's work has been seen everywhere from New York City metro cards to skate parks to billboards. We will no longer be seen and not heard, presumably referencing the old English proverb, children should be seen and not heard. In this case, she replaces children with the word we. We're not really sure who we are in this context. We only have the found imagery, the text, and the kind of gestures of the hands to help us decipher who this we might be. One of the exciting things about this particular set, it unfolds sequentially. It moves from each individual print through all nine to the last print. Ed Ruscha's book, Stains, celebrates the stain and recontextualizes it into something that is celebrated. The 75 different stains featured in this book include LA tap water, sulfuric acid, ketchup, motor oil, Coca-Cola, the list goes on. Ed Ruscha describes this set as a treasure chest of discovery. He is used to embracing non-traditional materials when making his art, and stains really highlights that for him. Excellent piece in the modern evening sale is Picasso's etching in aquatint, Eke Homo, after Rembrandt, or better known as Christ Presented to the People. Important to note that he is after Rembrandt because he appropriated a very famous print, homage from one master printmaker to an earlier master printmaker. Where Rembrandt placed Christ at the center of all the activity in his print, Picasso places himself at the center. It was completed in 1970, so it was very near the artist's death. It would have been one of his last prints, which is important to notice, uh, during a very prolific printmaking period towards the end of his life. Pat Steer notes that there should be an intense desire when making art. That is the only thing you think about, it's the only thing that you want to do in your life and that if you have that desire, then it is your calling to make art. She believes in embracing the element of chance, the sort of cosmic belief in letting the materials take their own form. She was inspired heavily by John Cage and Agnes Martin, who she knew personally early on in her career. This kind of meteoric-like cascade of color down the paper, down the canvas, that really speaks to the viewer when they're in front of her work. Robert Rauschenberg, created the Tribute 21 series with lifestyle brand Felicimo to inspire communities for change. Change in environment, change in technology, and to promote change in the coming century. He chose different icons of the time to highlight these different areas. For environment, Al Gore. For technology, Bill Gates. For literature, Toni Morrison. Rauschenberg believed in community and change and highlighted that throughout his entire career. He also believed in sustainability and decided to employ a vegetable dye transfer technique to create this series. 